Hi, I'm Al Emmerich, and it's time for another Creator Campfire Chat. Imagine being able to pitch someone on your idea, engage them with incredible enthusiasm so that they're enthralled by what you have to say. Then you're showered with an avalanche of questions because they're so pumped and excited. And on top of that, at the very end of the conversation, they invest in you or buy your product. That'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? Guess what? You've just been pitched. If I'm guessing right, you're still hanging around, and hopefully I did a successful job, if you are, of giving you my elevator pitch for this segment. The concept of the elevator pitch is well known, and, and actually the concept is very literal. The idea originated so that when you step on an elevator or you're with somebody, you pitch them your idea, and the time it gets from one floor to the next floor, you've gathered enough interest from them so that they want to go ahead and go all the way to the top listening to your idea. I remember when I was at OneSpark last year, I walked around and I saw so many amazing ideas, so many great people who were passionate but they really struggled with their elevator pitch. I heard about what it costs to make something. I heard about a lot of detail of technical nature, how, how this piece and gadget goes with this piece and gadget, how they're gonna change the world. There was a lot of great things, but, but very few actually hammered home their elevator pitch to the point where I was ready to go. Boom, I'm there, tell me more. And that's the whole purpose of this segment is to help you shape your elevator pitch. And there's three core elements that I like to use or talk about when it comes to shaping and crafting your elevator pitch. And it's literally an analogy to baseball. Number one is the pitch itself. Secondly is the catch. And then the third important element is what we call the pickoff move. So one of the reasons I use the analogy of baseball when it comes to your, your elevator pitch is the idea that Everybody loves the fastball. It's still America's favorite pitch, and nothing's more amazing when you see a 100-mile-an-hour fastball zinging in there. Well, that's what your situation has to be like at one spark. There's going to be, hopefully, hundreds of other folks that are going to be trying to do the same thing you're doing at one spark. People don't have 10, 15 minutes to listen to your pitch. They only have a few seconds. So your fastball has to come in hard and fast and to the point. And that's what we talk about with the first element of the pitch. It's the fastball. What's that value proposition, that instantaneous shot to the catcher that's gonna set the world on fire and change the world? You have to ignite that energy and passion right away with your fastball, and that's how you start with your pitch. So the second element is the catch. Make sure that person actually catches what you're saying. Now if your pitch is crisp, clear, concise, and to the point, then you increase the likelihood that they're going to catch it. And how do you know if they're catching it? Well, first of all, are they actively engaged with you? Are they looking at you? Are they listening? Are they shaking their head? Are they asking questions or at least physically looking like they're engaged with you? That's how you know at least at surface value that somebody has caught what you're saying. If they do start to ask questions and they hang around for more than that 10, 15 seconds that you, you pitched them to, then guess what? You're halfway there. That's the catch to move on your way to success. So you got the pitch, you got the catch, and the third element is the pickoff move. That last element of your pitch that catches them by surprise and leaves a lasting positive impression. If they caught your fastball, that means they're engaged and they're interested and possibly excited, but you gotta wow them at the very end. And working on that pickoff move can go a long way to leaving that impression because you may not see this person for, for months, days, weeks, you may never see them again. But a strong pickoff move can make the difference between them putting money in your coffer or keeping it in their pocket. Just like in baseball, if you're a pitcher, you gotta get on the mound and you gotta throw a lot of BP, you gotta throw a lot of practice pitches, and you gotta work with the catcher to make sure that you, you work in sync. Well, such is the same with your pitch, your elevator pitch. You gotta practice it. And here's some things you can do to get prepared to throw a 100 mile an hour fastball. First out of the box for pitching practice for you, identify that fastball right away. What is that part of your project? What issue do you solve? What problem do you solve? That's gonna go ahead and immediately grab people's attention and get them excited. Throw that fastball right off the bat. Capture that and you're on your way.
Next up, identify how your project works. You've already identified the fastball, how it's going to change the world. Now you need to very concisely and clearly identify how it works. Be cautious. Don't go into a lot of elaborate detail. This isn't the point right here. Capture the essence, deliver it quickly, and get that pitch out there so you can go ahead and move on to the next item. You've captured their imagination, you've got them engaged, you've shown them how it's going to change the world and how it works. You need to know what you want because what if somebody asks you, well, what are you looking for? Either it's that magic number or that magical next step you need to move on in the evolution of your project. Identifying that and being able to communicate it clearly and quickly will help you move on as you get closer to a fastball. If doing an elevator pitch and speaking to people, especially random strangers, is not one of your strong suits, and you need, definitely need to practice and figure out how to engage people. It's not about just what you say, it's also physically how you present yourself. Know your environment that you're working in and know what your limitations are and what the, uh, the, the added value is to your environment. Are you in a big space or are you in a small space? Some of those things you're, you're not obviously going to know until you actually get to the week of one spark. Everything you can do ahead of time, though, to control your environment environment and also prepare yourself to engage them verbally and physically will help you on your way towards a successful project. Make it easy for people to contact you. This was one of the most surprising parts of, uh, of last year. In talking to a lot of folks, they fumbled to go ahead and communicate as, as I was walking away how I can contact them. You'd think it'd be easy, but believe it or not, a lot of folks forget. Either have that business card ready in your pocket or some other unique communication tool so that if they're engaged, whether they said they're going to give you money or not, okay, if they're engaged, they can contact you directly. And don't be afraid to ask them for their contact information and have that close by, whether you're doing it electronically or whether you're doing it manually on paper. Either way, the simpler you can make the contact access point, the better it is for you to follow up or for them to follow up. Last up, make sure that pickoff move is strong. Practice it. Try it out on other folks. Make sure that move is so strong it catches them off guard, leaves a positive impression, and leaves them wanting more. I can't underscore enough how important it is that you practice your elevator pitch. Not practice it to the point where it sounds rehearsed, but practice it enough to where it's, it's part of you. It's, it's part of your regular cadence. Whether you're an expert at this and you've done it a million times or whether you're a rookie out there, if you've got a good plan and a strategy and you work on it and you try different approaches and you get feedback from others, that diverse talent pool, if you will, that's, that's in your toolbox, your toolkit, then you'll be better prepared for a fastball that's over 100 miles an hour that's catchable with a pickoff move that's a big, strong close and gets the win. We'll talk to you next time in our next Campfire Chat. Hey, thanks for hanging out. Leave your questions or comments in the video comments section. You can tweet them to at B1Spark using the hashtag, hashtag Campfire Chats. Check us out December 18th. Tune in at 1 o'clock for Creator Campfire Chats Live, where we'll answer your questions and dive deeper into the topics we cover in these videos. And hey, don't forget to subscribe to the One Spark channel and go to B1Spark.com to learn more about showcasing your project in 2014.